All right. Hi, folks. Welcome and thank you for joining us today for our webinar. It's uh, Data Rich, Quality Poor, The Value of Accurate Water Data, presented by your friends at Aquatic Informatics. We are live for about 30 minutes today, so I feel like we should just jump right in. I am Eric Larson. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Aquatic Informatics. I look forward to sharing um, our fascinating journey with you all today. As always, I'm so glad to be working with Erin Lim uh, and especially excited to have her share uh, her journey today as well. I'll let her introduce uh, herself to you all. Thanks, Eric. I'm Erin Lim. I'm the Program Manager for Predictive Analytics at Aquatic Informatics. I spent the past two years researching and talking to organizations like yourselves about the current challenges with data quality and correction. And I'm excited to synthesize these learnings for you today and to share how we are leveraging advancements in machine learning and artificial intelligence to solve these challenges for you. Awesome. Thanks, Erin. Uh, let's go over the agenda and some housekeeping and we will get right into the discussion. Uh, looks like there are a couple people having some technical issues hearing us. Um, if you can't hear us, please drop a message in the chat and our technical team will help you out. No problem. All right, folks. So for today's agenda, we've got about 20 minutes of content to cover before we jump into our always lively Q&A discussion. Um, today, we'll quickly set the scene with some key challenges in water quality data control. Uh, we'll then talk through the evolution of data quality processes and what the future looks like for those processes. Uh, we'll introduce you to our newest offering. I know you're all excited to hear about this one, uh, HydroCorrect. And we'll walk you through the stories of two of our pilot program customers. Uh, you'll be able to see the direct value of implementing HydroCorrect from those stories. And then, like I mentioned before, we'll jump into some Q&A. And we'll do just a quick housekeeping, understand uh, some few points here on our webinar FYIs. Uh, firstly, our speakers will, I'm sorry, our audience members will be muted, not the speakers, hopefully, uh, for the duration of today's event. So you can clearly hear our speakers. Um, like I mentioned before, if you are having any trouble hearing us, please do use that chat function to reach out. And our tech team will get right on it with you to troubleshoot. Uh, we will be answering your questions live at the end of the session. So in that little Q&A box, you are welcome to put your questions in. And then, folks, um, you're welcome to upvote those questions. If you maybe have the same question or you'd love to hear the answer, make sure to hit that thumbs up and we'll prioritize those questions accordingly. And uh, finally, we will be sharing a lot of insights today. But don't worry if you don't catch everything or if you've got a colleague who jumped in late or anything. Um, you'll be getting an email with the event recording and some other great assets from us later this week. And we will go ahead and get started with the challenge, right? So we're first just going to discuss that challenge that so many organizations like you are facing with regard to QAQC or data quality processes. And that challenge is the time that it takes to perform those processes. So of course, QAQC data quality processes ensure that data is collected and processed um, consistently and accurately, as we all know. Um, it's especially important for water data as it's used to support regulatory decisions and guide management practices. And we cannot cut that step out. Um, it creates trust not only in the data itself, but with the leadership of the organization, the constituents of your area as well. Um, so when we were doing research to, to start developing HydroCorrect, um, Aaron's going to jump into that whole journey, but I'll just give you kind of the, the high level. You know, as we were talking to some organizations, we were finding that the average, and that's the average QAQC professional, takes up to five days every six to eight weeks to sift through all that field data and ensure its accuracy. That is a ton of time. Um, of course, it's, it's necessary to maintain and improve that data quality, but there has to be a better way. You know, and as we went through and we started talking to more and more organizations, we saw that there was even some, some teams that were spending up to 3,200 hours per year on QAQC. I mean, just absolutely bonkers. So, you know, that mundane, repetitive, and boring work that, that professionals don't want to do, it, but it has to be done, right? Uh, but as an organization, you want those professionals working on the highest value add tasks, not necessarily doing these super mundane things that might not be adding a ton of value, but like I said, it just has to be done, right? So I think what we'll do here is we'll just take a look at 
how the technology around data quality started and has evolved. And we'll see where we're headed. And Aaron is going to take us through that discussion here. All right. Thanks, Eric. Yes, I wanted to spend some time looking at the evolution of data correction so that we remember where we started to understand where we are going. Um, and in this slide, um, it shows like the early data correction process started out using pen and paper, which many organizations are still doing today for parts of their process. But as the amounts of uh, collected data increased, organizations turned towards using productivity tools like spreadsheets to help with reviewing data and generating reports. Of course, spreadsheets didn't have tools specifically for the uh, data correction workflow, so organizations needed to hire contractors to build customized tools to fill in these gaps. This, of course, led to the next evolution from homegrown solutions to water data management applications that stored data in a centralized location and provided tools to support humans doing their data correction work. And this is where most organizations currently are in their data correction process today. And what is common about each of these phases that we have talked about so far is that the role of people in the data correction workflow is to perform the corrections on the data. But now we've reached a point where we can start to reimagine the role of people and their data correction workflows in light of growing technological developments. IoT, cloud applications, and telemetry have shifted the focus towards networks, making greater amounts of data more accessible and increasing the connectedness of the physical and digital worlds. Machine learning and artificial intelligence are also allowing us to learn from the data so that we can take action more quickly. We can start to leverage these technologies to transition the data correction workflow away from people performing corrections to people monitoring machines performing corrections. So today, we wanted to talk to you about what step could look like in the context of data QAQ sense with machines, but about enabling a new type of collaboration between humans and machines to free up users to focus on more high value tasks. Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron, for that overview. Super helpful, I'm sure, for everybody in the audience. I know when you shared it with me the first time, my mind was blown. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into um, a really exciting part of today's presentation, which is, of course, we'd like to introduce you to HydroCorrect. Uh, we see HydroCorrect as that future state that Aaron mentioned for people monitoring those corrections instead of performing the corrections. Uh, and then from there, like I mentioned earlier, we'll just jump into a couple of stories from our pilot program customers to see how HydroCorrect uh, transformed the way they handle their data quality processes. So first, I just want to jump in and talk a little bit about the features of HydroCorrect so you can understand its use. Uh, and then we'll go through kind of some of the, um, the value propositions and the ways that it will change the way uh, that you do business. So I am, of course, incredibly excited to introduce you to HydroCorrect. It is our answer, Aquatic Informatics answer, to your time series QAQC challenges in what is more and more becoming a big data world. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, through years of research and employing the expertise of the best predictive analytics and AI machine learning experts, we developed HydroCorrect, a predictive analytics engine that's built into the Aquarius uh, platform that performs automatic data corrections and suggestions. It identifies and corrects anomalies, and it creates a data quality standard across your organization. That's interdepartmental as well. So HydroCorrect leverages artificial intelligence, but also QAQC rules like level threshold and rate of change. We found that combining simple rules is as effective um, as more complex machine learning um, at detecting common data issues but the advantage is uh, that those simple rules are familiar and they're understandable. So we don't need that big black box uh, that you'll end up getting confused or nervous about. It's a very approachable, easy to understand system. Um, so once QAQC issues have been identified and detected, once HydroCorrect is up and running, the data can automatically be suppressed, flagged, and even estimated. Um, HydroCorrect, of course, like Aaron mentioned, is not just an automation tool, but it is a tool to help your organization adopt and embrace automation to its full potential. A lot of folks get a little bit nervous about that, that automation talk, right? That I don't want to hand the keys to my data over. And this is not what we're doing at all. This is a 
easy, scalable approach to automation that um, you as the owner of your data will retain that ownership in perpetuity. Uh, so, of course, everybody always wants to know about the setup, right? You know, anytime you're going to implement new software, setup is always a big barrier for, for really any software solution. And I'm, I'm you know, proud to tell you that the, the setup and the implementation for HydroCorrect is uh, it's an automatic setup and it leverages, uh, of course, our deep domain experience as aquatic informatics and, of course, your historical data. Uh, and that will provide you with an optimal starting point and an easy way for you to get the system implemented and you can start seeing value right out of the gate. Um, of course, though, I want to caveat that with we know that nothing is going to be perfect at first. So once it's up and running, HydroCorrect will enable you to evaluate and tune the rules and, of course, will support you in deciding on which rules to automate and which require human review. The system is designed to provoke and encourage users in that process with the goal over time being to move the organization toward increasing levels of, I'm sorry, of automation. Um, and then lastly on this, uh, of course, it, it does include rules to leverage your field visit data to automatically correct that continuous time series data. Uh, and that will address fouling and calibrations as well. So lots and lots to talk about here. Um, I can't get it all, Aaron and I couldn't get it all down into one webinar, even if we had an hour and a half, we couldn't explain to you all the value of it. But, you know, one quick little thing there, of course, like we talked about earlier with the challenge, right, is what could you accomplish with an extra month of working days each year? And that's just the average. Uh, I'll share this and then we'll just jump right into some customer stories. So uh, we did just want to share with you some of like the main use cases that our pilot program customers went through uh, with HydroCorrect. Of course, it's easy to configure and use, like I mentioned before, uh, a proprietary recommendation uh, engine, of course, analyzes that historical data and, su and suggests those rules. Um, the centralized management is a huge one that our customers uh, who tested it out really loved. You can review those data corrections, the suggestions and the anomalies, as well as make rule changes and adjust your, uh, your alert parameters all from that same centralized dashboard. And it's incredibly easy to use. I mean, we tested this thing over and over and made tweaks every round and it is really great. Um, and then of course, lastly, you get your defensible reporting with that accuracy of the data that's achieved in the fraction of the time and the data confidence is even higher. Your reporting becomes a snap and your leadership is gonna have a ton of confidence in the data that they're sending out to your governing bodies as well as to the citizens. And I will pass it back over to Aaron, who was uh, the leader of our HydroCorrect pilot program. And she's going to talk a little bit about uh, the last nine months of excitement. Go for it, Aaron. <laughs> All right. So in the last nine months, uh, we have been running a pilot program of HydroCorrect with seven existing Aquarius customers. The goal of the pilot program was to understand how well HydroCorrect addressed common challenges that our research into current data correction and quality practices revealed. Um, we focused on learning the time spent on QAQC processes and where HydroCorrect could save users time so that they could work on higher value tasks. We also looked at the data standards that are currently being followed by organizations and how HydroCorrect could enforce better processes and rigor in data correction practices. And finally, um, we also looked at the value that HydroCorrect could provide organizations through automation and improved data quality. So in the pilot program, the engineering team and the pilot program customers met every two weeks to discuss the progress on and improvements for HydroCorrect. They also examined challenges with the current manual workflows, such as um, correcting time series like the one shown on the slide, which typically requires scrolling through months or years of data to find anomalies to correct. The feedback that we consistently heard from all our customers was that this is a very time consuming, tedious and boring task. Uh, these valuable insights um, now guide our design of how HydroCorrect can use automation to help our users uh, optimize their attention around their data. And over the course of the pilot program, we applied our learnings to new features and enhancements, which were also made available through our regular monthly updates. And so next, I want to introduce you to some of our pilot program customers. Um, one of our customers um, who participated in the HydroCorrect program is an environmental protection agency for one of the largest cities in North America. 
They have been an Aquarius customer for eight years and use Aquarius to monitor time series data across their 1900, 19, 1,925 sites. Um, they were interested in participating in the pilot program because um, they had limited staff. So they were forced to prioritize correcting only the critical points in their data correction process. So as a result, 90% of their time series were not being reviewed for noise or bad data. So let's take a look at the statistics. So um, in the pilot program, the organization asked two of their data analysts to participate in the pilot program. Um, together, these data analysts monitored 10 stations with a total of about 791 time series, meaning they were spending upwards of seven hours each week performing QA, QC on their data. Um, in the pilot program, the data analysts monitored HydroCorrect performing corrections on their data um, for all of their 10 stations. And with HydroCorrect, they were able to reduce the amount of time they spent on QAQC to one hour per week, which is a total of 86% time savings. Um, per annum, this translates to providing their organization a $15,000 savings in annual cost savings and about 300 hours in time savings with automated QAQC processes. And their feedback to us on HydroCorrect was that Having a program that can autocorrect data or anomalies saves us time and provides a more accurate reflection of the current situation. And Eric, do you want to talk about the next pilot program customer? Absolutely. Thrilled to. Yeah. So our second pilot program customer we'll be discussing today uh, is a globally renowned engineering and consulting firm in the environmental space. They are an Aquarius customer for 10 plus years with us, which is just phenomenal. They've been a great partner with us. Uh, they use Aquarius to monitor their time series data across 237 sites. Uh, and they mentioned to us that, you know, in talks we were going through, hey, we're developing this. Is it something you'd be interested in? And, and they really couldn't wait to jump on board with us. They mentioned to us that, you know, they handle such a large volume of data across those 237 sites that their experts were spending, uh, I, I quote, way too much uh, time on QAQC processes and uh, that those folks time was much better spent elsewhere doing something that they, uh, you know, could provide real organizational value with. So I'll jump right in here. I thought it would be interesting to share just a little quote here from the customer. And uh, as Aaron did, I'll show you just a little bit of a sneak peek of uh, our screen here, our, our software. So um, the engineering and consulting firm shared with us that, of course, HydroCorrect is catching anomalies in their vast data sets uh, efficiently and it's uh, improving their, their data quality while saving the team hours of QA uh, time across the 237 hydrometric sites. Now you can see here on the screen that there are two separate data sets, right? Uh, two different colors, the blue and the green, the original and the corrected. So the original is gonna be that, uh, that green and then the blue is the corrected color. So you can see there, it makes it such an easy process for those who are reviewing that data. Instead of spending hours on those manual corrections, they can see where those corrections occurred uh, and easily provide that report out if there's a question that comes from uh, anybody higher up in the organization or, or anything else. And I'll jump over and just share with you some of the metrics here. I wanna make sure we've got time for some questions. So the results of the pilot program for our engineering and consulting a uh, pilot program customer. They were working with five analysts um, on their data in their in the program. Uh, they had a, a series of 25 uh, stations across which they monitored a total of 948 uh, time series. Now they were typically spending approximately 12 minutes per time series on um, their QAQC before they implemented HydroCorrect. And that time has now dropped to two minutes per time series, just an absolutely exponential time savings. Um, as well as, I mean, if we take a look at that 83% time savings, what that translates to in real dollars and real hours for those folks working, $142,000 annually is that cost savings um, of automating the QAQC, as well as the value that's added by allowing those folks to work on those higher value tasks like we've been discussing. And then of course that 2,844 hours that this customer is saving per year by automating that data validation with HydroCorrect. I mean, we've just, 
were absolutely thrilled to hear these results. When we started working with them, we, we thought it was going to be great. And then, I mean, Aaron and I both, when we started looking at the numbers, we just were blown away by this amazing result that we found. So I will uh, just jump in and wrap up here with just our, our kind of what you what you as an organization can achieve with HydroCorrect. You know, we've been through the value props, we've been through some of the features, but just to share with you, you know, decreasing that time and resources spent on QAQC, right? We can't really say it enough because time is incredibly valuable. I know to everyone who's, who's listening to this webinar, it's your most valuable resource. Um, of course, handling the increasing data volume with ease. That's the more important part, right? You need to be able to easily scale and effectively um, you know, scale up your data, um, your data capabilities across your organization, especially as technology continues to evolve, your data volumes are just going to continue to increase. So scaling is just incredibly important. Uh, you know, identifying and addressing data anomalies, which, you know, may not happen that often, but when they do happen can be incredibly time consuming and they can cost you major resources with figuring out, okay, where do I need to replace something or what's going on here? And then, you know, once it's easily identified and easily um, the source of that problem is, is explained through HydroCorrect, you can implement a proactive maintenance um, and you know, saving you even more time on, on those repairs and even more resources being able to bundle sensor purchases and, you know, things along those lines, of course, fuel costs and, and hours of experts spent replacing, uh, you know, just uh, be able to streamline that entire process. And then, of course, reducing time to value, right? You're re reducing that data latency. You're improving the data quality with regard to your data processes. And then lastly, you're improving that defensibility by reducing human error, implementing and enforcing that data quality standard across the organization. So, you know, you don't have two folks who have different ideas of how the data should be cleaned and sent out. You've got that standard of data that happens across the organization. And you've got that robust audit trail with the option for the easy reporting. So I will wrap up all of my uh, feature and value prop talk there with a just a quick audience poll question. You should see something popping up on your screen here, folks. Uh, it should be a pretty easy click of the button there. Would you be interested um, in speaking with our sales team, the Aquatic Informatics sales team, about HydroCorrect in the near future? Don't worry, we won't spam you with emails and phone calls or anything. If you if you select yes, someone will reach out to you within a little while and we will uh, we will see how we can help you just, you know, completely streamline your data quality operations. And then, of course, uh, we'll give you a minute. Looks like we've got some great results there. Thanks so much to to those of you who are excited to check out HydroCorrect. This is looking great so far. Better than I expected. I'm sure our, our tech team is, is all thumbs up right now. Awesome. Thanks, folks. All right. Well, listen, um, wanted to make sure we leave time for the Q&A. But, but first, um, you know, on behalf of, of Aaron and myself, we would just want to give you a big thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, we know that this was a streamlined webinar. Uh, please keep an eye out for uh, an in-depth demo webinar of HydroCorrect that will be coming out very soon. You'll be seeing uh, emails, posts on our LinkedIn, all that kind of fun stuff um, about our solution showcase walkthroughs, as well as if you're already an Aquarius customer, you will uh, be receiving an invitation to our customer roundtable webinar. So if you're not yet an Aquarius customer and you're interested in Aquarius and HydroCorrect, definitely get in touch with us. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, like I said at the beginning, don't worry if you missed anything. The recording of this webinar will be sent out as well as some collateral for you to check out all about HydroCorrect. And I will open up the floor to questions here. I've got my Q&A box open. So if you have additional questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We've got six minutes left on the board here. So I see one that's got a few upvotes here from looks like Alan Frost. Alan asks, how do you handle an inherited database that has decades worth of possible data errors? So it sounds like we've got a, a, a historical data correction question here. Aaron, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we've been doing some active research on how we can 
process, uh, or at least use uh, HydroCorrect to autocorrect um, historical data. At the moment, HydroCorrect only looks at forward uh, newly added data, but it's definitely been something that we've heard a lot of requests of. from our pilot program customers. So we're actively doing research. Excellent. Yeah, Aaron, I think you might've broken up there. Uh, folks, if you missed that, um, Aaron just said that that was definitely gonna be something that we are looking at in the future and it's something that our pilot program customers have mentioned to us. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's move to the next question here. Uh, let's see, Michael Phelps, uh, Michael, uh, Michael asks, does this program interface with WIMS? Michael, that's a good question. This product does not interface with WIMS at this time. Um, that is something of course that aquatic informatics is always looking at, uh, seeing where all of our products can, uh, provide value across our entire product suite. So please feel free uh, to reach out to Scott Dorner or anybody else on our product team and let them know that that is something that you would be interested in. I'm sure it's just a part of a discussion they've already had, but any evidence that our customers are looking for it is always excellent for us to know. Uh, let's see, Carmen Riddle, I'm sorry, Riddell, Carmen Riddell, sorry if I mispronounced your name there, Carmen. Uh, Carmen asks, what kinds of machine learning models are used. Aaron, do you feel like getting into that there? Ooh, that's a, that's a good that's one. A nice, that one might be one for question, Brian yeah. Gallage. I don't know. I don't yeah, know that exactly. one for sure. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think we have enough time to go into the models at this point in yeah. time with only three minutes left, but definitely very interested to talk about this with you. So um, Carmen, feel free to reach out to me by email and I'll put you in touch with some of the experts in machine learning at our organization and we can have a conversation about that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Carmen. It's a, good, a great question. And then of course, folks, if you see our emails up there on the screen, uh, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Uh, we are always happy to, to chat with you. Uh, let's see, somebody else asked, how should we keep track of corrections or generate QAQC reports when dealing with extremely large data sets? Is that, uh, with, is that question related to using HydroCorrect? I think so. How should we keep track of corrections or generate QAQC reports? when dealing with extremely large data sets. As far as I know, the HydroCorrect can handle any volume of data sets. I mean, especially from our pilot program, but Aaron, please correct me if, I, if I'm wrong there. Uh, I think Aaron is having a little bit of trouble with her connection here, folks. Apologies for that. Um, Aaron, if you want to type your answer in the chat, you are welcome to do that. Let me see if I can answer one or two more here. If we can see if we can get Aaron back. Um, so Brandon, Brandon asked, what is the pricing model for HydroCorrect? Brandon, that's a fantastic question. And it's one that our sales team will definitely be the ones to answer for you. Uh, so once you are ready, you can reach out to our sales team. Uh, and they will be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo with you and anybody else from your organization. And you can go over pricing, costs, any other concerns that you might have about implementing HydroCorrect. Uh, let's see if there's any others that I can answer here. Da -da -da. Oh, looks like we've got Aaron back and we've probably got time for one more question here. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Aaron, how exactly does HydroCorrect help ensure a data quality standard? Do you want to jump in on that one? Uh oh, looks like you might have lost Aaron again, folks. I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Um, I will see if I can grab one last question. So sorry for any technical difficulties we might have uh, encountered today. 
Ah, somebody asked if we can show the hydrocorrect, if we could do a hydrocorrect demo. Yeah, absolutely. Just like I mentioned before, we will be doing a, uh, a hydrocorrect uh, demo, what we call a solution walkthrough webinar. So you'll be getting an email invite um, and we'll, be, we'll make sure that uh, anybody who attended the webinar today that you are invited to that solution walkthrough webinar so that you can see a live demo and see HydroCorrect working on an example data set. Uh, today, we really just wanted to show you uh, how excited we are to introduce this product, um, show off all of its great features and, and value propositions for your organization and talk through the great um, you know, results that our, our pilot program customers encountered with it. So. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up there. We're one minute over. So once again, a big thank you from myself and Aaron Lim and everybody at the Aquatic Informatics team. Uh, we do hope that you will join us at one of our future webinars. And if you have any questions or you're interested in checking out HydroCorrect for your organization, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.